Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Aaron with Ailey Knives, and tonight we're gonna forge a Go My Billet. It's gonna be the billet that I use on my next knife build. A Go My Billet consists of five layers. Tonight, my billet is gonna have a Damascus core with 1084 stripes and a 15 and 20 outer cladding, and I'm gonna do it all by hand with a hammer, so let's jump right in, guys. All right, so here's the deal. I've got a lot of forging videos out there now. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all of the cleaning up of the materials and all that good stuff. So basically, here's my materials. I'm gonna show it to you. I've got a Damascus piece here that is just a random pattern Damascus. That's gonna be the core. Uh, I've got 1084. I'm gonna cut two pieces of 1084 to go on either side of this. And then I've got the 15 and 20, and then 15 and 20 is gonna go on the outside of that. So basically, I'm gonna cut all these at the same lengths, I'm gonna clean them all up on the grinder, I'm gonna get them fairly clean with uh, acetone, and then we're gonna tack weld these guys together. Uh, I'll show you those processes really abbreviated and short, and then we're gonna move on to some forging. Doubled up my material there, since we're cutting them all at the same length. Got the 1084 and the 15 and 20 all at once. I think what would be really um, advantageous for me if I'm going to continue doing projects like this is if I get myself a, a container that is acetone proof and pour the acetone in it so that I can soak these pieces in acetone and, uh, and really let the acetone do its job rather than just trying to wipe these off with a rag. I think that this method works, but it's definitely not the best method for doing this. Plus the acetone, it'll eat through your gloves like instantly. Sacrificial vice vice that I don't care about, so I weld in that vise. All right, let's make sure we get our layers right. We wanted the Damascus in the middle, and then I had two thin layers of 1084, so I know that those go there, and then I have the thicker layers of the 15 and 20 that are gonna go on the outside. Can you see me? Here we go. Now we got a handle. The billet. There we go, you can see it. Damascus power core surrounded by two layers of 1084 and two layers of 15 and 20. Hopefully this turns out to be a wicked new knife, guys. All right, let's light the forge. I think I'm there, I got a nice yellow heat. Here we go, we're gonna set these well.
looks like my battery died. Um, you, you didn't miss anything. I just continued to hit it a couple more times and then I threw it in the, the annealing tank. Now, I just pulled it out for the first time and I see there are some problems. Um, this outer layer right here, I noticed last night when I would hit the built here, it would delaminate. And I tried to put it back and a couple different times it picked up. So I just stopped. Because I know that once you have this area that won't forge, you're not going to get it to forge weld. I don't know why it decided not to forge weld in this one little area here. But my plan is, since I stopped when I did, maybe I'll be able to grind that out past the D-lambs and, uh, and still have a good usable piece of steel to work with. And see, right? Can you see right here? You can see how, yeah, right there. You can see this little area right there. So hopefully that, you know, hopefully that's just this area right on the edge and I'll be able to grind it off. I think there's still enough usable steel here to make a knife. I'm going to bring the camera around. I'm going to show you where these delaminations are, what my thought process is about these delams, and how I'm going to try to work around them to where we can get a good usable piece of steel out of this. Here's the steel. I haven't fully cleaned it up yet. So I marked this out with the Sharpie so that you could see. I doubt you can even see the delamination. I mean, yeah, right there. You could see right there, right there is a delam. Now, I don't think that it runs very deep. When I was forging this last night, I noticed that when I'd hit it here, just the very edge would come up. And that's when I stopped forging. The other D-lamb that I have is right here. There's a little tiny D-lamb. You could see I tried to grind that out. That's as far as I ground, and I'm pretty much to the bottom of the pocket. I don't think that that delamination is going to go much farther into the bill. It might. We'll see. This is what I'm thinking. If that d lamb is there, it only comes down to here on the side. If I grind this shape right here, and, and there's still a d lamb right here, what I'll do is I'll grind a secondary bevel so that that takes away all the material that might be delaminated. And the other delamination was right here. So this is the belly of the knife where it's going to come up into the finger groove. You can see I kind of marked out where I suspected how deep that delamination might go. And so I've drawn a knife on this that I think that I can squeeze out of this billet and, uh, and have good usable steel. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to step over and I'm going to grind this profile and then I'm going to soak it in water and see if I can see any lines show up, any tall tale signs that, they're, that I might still need to grind out some more delaminations. Now here, remember what I said. This side right here, it, it delammed right, ac right across the core. This would have been a better side to make the cutting edge because you're going to grind this up anyway. So that delamination that you see right here and when you grind your bevel, that could have pushed that material all the way up here you know, by the time that you grind your bevel. And chances are you can grind that delamination out. I couldn't put the cutting edge on this side because of this delam here. And I had to have clearance. So I couldn't have, I couldn't have the spine of the knife come right up to the billet because of that. So the shape of this coming up here and where this is at, I may have to do a bevel here and then a, a either a false edge or a secondary bevel on the top depending on if this d lamb goes deeper than my profile. We'll see. I'm going to go over and we're going to grind this out real quick on the grinder. Nope. That's a nasty d lamb, guys. It showed up all the way around on that side right there. Let's peel it apart. Let's put this in here. This is what I want to show you. That's the D-Lamb. It was a failure. Let's, uh, let's destroy it. Let's pull it apart. Alright, so we got glasses and gloves. Let's just try to peel that apart. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that.
You know, <laughs> you know what would be cool? If I could get this whole thing to peel off and then I could make two knives out of what's left. That would be pretty cool. I doubt it would ever work that way. Because there'll probably be one section that does weld. Look at that. Alright, we'll grind that the rest of the way off. Alright, so there we go. Let's clean this off and we'll clean that off. And we're going to make a knife out of this thing. You bet. And whenever you're experimenting, I know a lot of people who would have just thrown that right in the trash. But I'm gonna make a pretty cool knife out of it. It just might be a little different than what we were hoping for. Either way, all the steel that I used is good hardenable steel. So it'll all make a good cutting edge. It just won't have the layout of pattern that I was looking for originally. But you know what, it's gonna work. All right, so let's grind this bad boy up. All right guys, here's what we're left with. These are the two layers that I peeled off. Um, you know, they just, they didn't weld. And what I was left with was a good solid three layers. So basically I have a sand my billet, um, an irregular sand my, because what I have here is I have Damascus on one side, 1084 in the middle, and 15 and 20 on the other side. It'll be really interesting to see how this knife finishes out you know, one side's going to have lots of activity, the other side's going to have little activity, you know, uh, but hey, you know, it's still going to be a good usable knife. What do you guys think went wrong here? You know, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I'd like you guys to weigh in and tell me what you think went wrong. Me personally, I think what happened was, uh, let's talk about the variables real quick. I cleaned all these materials exactly the same at the same time within a 15 minute period. So I don't think it had anything to do with preparation or cleanliness of the materials. Uh, you know, the fluxing, all that went perfect. I think what happened was it's really cold in my shop. And when I pulled this out at forge welding temperatures and set it on my frozen anvil, that it sucked the heat out of the bottom layers of the billet to the point where it was just beneath welding temperatures when I started to weld these together, when I started to hammer weld them together. And so basically what I'm thinking is this was on the bottom and when I pulled it out to set my welds, the anvil just sucked the heat out of those and, and the, they weren't hot enough to weld. And then what happened was each su subsequential heat that I brought it out, I was just, you know, there's oxygen flow and different things like that in there that prevented these from ever welding and once that delamination started it just you know you can't ever get it to stick at that point so that's what i think happened but you know i'm no expert at this i'm just getting into doing these forge welded product projects so let me know what you guys think i'm really interested to hear your take on it i am excited to finish this out it's going to be a cool knife when it's all said and done with so on the next video, I'll go ahead and have this knife completed for you. We'll grind it, heat treat it, put scales on it, and you guys will get to see the figure pop out. I'm really interested to see what kind of activity is on this blade. So I'll catch you guys on Sunday. Thanks. Bye.